Calcium metal is an extremely dangerous, reactive and corrosive element with an ability to create explosive hydrogen gas on contact with water. Seashells are mainly composed of calcium carbonate and to go from seashells to calcium metal, all I have to do is process it into a viable form and then somehow put the calcium out from the compound. So let's -a go! So first of all, I've started loading up some of the seashells into a coffee grinder. And now let's weigh it. Overall we've got around 178 grams of the powder and I've measured out around 25 grams of that amount. Next I measured out around 50 ml of 30% hydrochloric acid. Then the beaker containing the calcium carbonate, yes I'm gonna stop referring to it as seashells, has been transferred onto a hot plate and then I've turned on the steering. Next I started pouring in some of the concentrated hydrochloric acid and immediately you can see a really intense reaction happening. What's happening here is a simple neutralization reaction where calcium carbonate acts as a base and with an acid it produces water, a calcium salt, in this case calcium chloride and some carbon dioxide. Eventually I've added some water and oh boy was it a mistake, like most things I do. And that's because it basically made it possible for the carbon dioxide to bubble over and boom YATI! Um, sorry, excuse me. That was my best Homelander impression. Anyway, thanks to all the steering I was able to help the overflowing issue, but in hindsight I should have just dumped it in the bucket. Once all of the calcium carbonate was reacted with the acid, I've put the whole solution for a filter. After the filtration, it's time to boil off everything and get our salt. But before we begin, I have to first make some boiling chips. Eventually the whole thing started looking syrupy, so I've just let it sit outside in the freezing cold. In the morning everything crystallized and you could see how it was still the hydrate version of the calcium chloride, and I couldn't have any water present overall. All I've had to do was put it onto a hot plate and crank up the heat into the max. Anyway, I've left it for like an hour and I may or may not have forgotten about it, but eh. Once I came back it was pretty puffed up and looked actually pretty nice. Anyway, now that we have pure calcium chloride, it's time to make calcium metal. And to start, this is my sodium metal, in the forms of little metal beads. Then I've added 2 grams of the sodium beads into a test tube, then added 4 grams of calcium chloride and finally shook it around for dramatic effect. Also, you may not see it on camera, but this test tube was plugged with toilet paper, to limit air from going into the test tube. That's because calcium as well as sodium react with air to produce oxides, which would lower the yield significantly. Anyway, I was hitting it very intensely and for quite a long time to get as good of a yield as possible. However, I've barely had time to realize that hitting it so intensely was a critical error, which resulted in the test tube almost cracking altogether. Oh, the glass is cracking. Anyway, using very quick thinking, I've covered the braking test tube using some aluminum foil with gloss on, so that perhaps it would stabilize the glass from breaking apart completely. It does look promising though. Okay. Right, so this whole chunk at the bottom is actually pretty much 100% sodium, so it's not even worth to, you know, to check out. It will be pretty fun when I dump it in the river. Okay, this is cutting, this is cutting. Anyway, you can hear me in the background getting excited, meanwhile screaming at an inanimate object how it's calcium. And that's pretty true. As you can see, sodium started zipping around the beaker, which is what it usually does, because it's lighter than water, and the calcium part just sank to the bottom because it's more dense than water. Also, an obvious giveaway is the hydrogen, which sodium usually auto-ignites, but calcium just slowly releases. It's freezing. Still though, even after all that effort, there was no way to separate sodium and calcium. At least not with my current equipment. So I've just added some water and you can see it starts bubbling. Which means most of it is calcium after all. And bringing the match onto the bubbles pretty much single-handedly proves that we've got calcium. Anyway, as I've promised, here's me dropping the sodium chunk into some water. But first let's heat it up. <laughs> 